nice to meet you. <laughs> Last week, uh, Professor Miguel introduced me to the Atlas. Wow, <laughs> uh, it's very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And very friendly to use it. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, that's what we try to. That's My, important to us that it's user friendly and anyone can use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are, I am using. We are I, mean, I am getting. Uh, say, Marcus. Ah, we are working with the search engine techniques to the metrics that are, that are in this place. Uh, we hope as soon as possible to have interesting results to, to present. It's very, very uh, my students are, are, are working hard. It, it, I hope to have uh, some results. <laughs> Excellent. Are you using the single cell expression atlas or the uh, the single other Single cell. Oh. Single cell. I introduced cell. them to the single cell. Yeah. Okay. Oops. They they are good on clustering and also on to to develop uh, gene gene signatures for tissues. You know, they yes. have they, they have a great method for for finding signatures. Okay, I, I would be interested to find out about it, about your methods actually. Mm -hmm. So we do you work on a particular um, on a particular tissue? I guess I sent I sent it to him uh, COVID data because they they work uh, with the, the methods the, with the mathematical analysis doesn't uh, matter what would be the biological. So I sent, uh, uh, I think, the first uh, input for COVID that you have in the Atlas. OK, I think the uh, um, uh, PBMCs, like blood samples, right? Yeah, that's it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Yes. He, Marcus is used to sparse matrices. I, I, I'm uh, using uh, the other uh, Atlas. And all my work is based on my SQL, so I cannot fit the the single cell data and my SQL. I will have to change all my codes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, we had to change um, basically moving from the bulk data sets to single cell data sets. There was a lot. Mm -hmm. We had to change in the background the way we process data sets, mm -hmm. file formats, and so on. We have some good results with the baseline experiments. If you'd like to see someday, we can uh, classify a, a gene that is uh, overactive in some tissues and is not zero in the others. It has uh, an average on all the others but it's an outline in a in a special tissue so okay. we, we 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 are running this approach with the baselines like right. for instance for instance the gapdh gene for from glycolysis it appears as an outlier in muscle in not in all other tissues for instance and uh, so we can select all the genes that are especially highly expressed in a tissue, and not in not on the others, with uh, uh, a calculation uh, derived from uh, box plots, the same way you calculate the outliers there. I'd like to to show to you someday some. Okay, some that would be great, actually. Mm -hmm. Because uh, yeah. that's also something for us to implement for the future to kind of highlight mm -hmm. this kind yeah. of in Atlas. Uh -huh. Sure. All right. We are expecting people to arrive. Sometimes they have to go to the website to get the link. They yeah. will. They will be here around five past the hour. Let's, okay. I'm. I'm checking. I learned that oh, Gloria is here. Gloria is going to be your chair. Say hi, Gloria. How is your camera there? Say hi, 
she just got into the the meeting let's see if she my microphone was muted and my ah, camera no was not hello irene nice to meet you it's a pleasure to have you here today hi gloria i'm really happy to be here nice to meet you too <laughs> yeah too. Oh, hi. hello elder hey, gloria, gloria. Elder, elder yeah. knows Irene. Oh, yeah, we met before. Yeah. Hi, Elder. Hi, Irene. Hi, Irene. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, it's been ages. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I think I went there in 2019, right? Yeah. Cool. That's so great. are Pete still there or not? Uh, well, we are working from home now. Oh, uh, the EBI is, uh, is closed for the pandemic. I see. Mm. Yeah. There's only a few people there. Um, I've been three times in the last year and a half at the EBI. Oh, gosh. Wow. <laughs> but I yeah. thought in, in England, uh, everybody was uh, working again. No, not, not yet. Well, in, uh, it depends on the um, people who work in the lab are working. Uh, in, in the lab, but for us who are computational, uh, the advice is that we still stay at home so that there are less people in the buildings and on the campus as well. Okay, <laughs> yeah, L like like every everywhere in Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Are you also working from home in Brazil? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Working home. But uh, some students are working in the lab, but uh, only the ones that need to be in the, on the bench. Yeah. Well, um, Miguel. Hi. Usually we do some uh, conversation uh, before uh, we, we start like uh, uh, five minutes past the hour because some people go over the link to get here so mm -hmm. I, I used to know say if, if yeah, you, you know that Brazilians are Brazilians are not like British right so uh, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when when I was in Australia they are very British and then uh, there was a seminar at, at midday and then it started at midday and end ended at 1 p.m. And it was exact at midday, we were there and the, the seminar started at 1 p.m. The seminar mm -hmm. closed. And like, my goodness. And then I remember some speakers that were showing many, many results. And in the last five minutes, they say, this is my last slide. I said, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, it's impossible for me to speak too much. <laughs> Elder knows me. <laughs> yeah, my... Irene, Irene, you know that we, we are from uh, several PhD programs, mostly on bioinformatics. I and Gloria, we are in Minas Gerais, in the middle of Brazil. Elder is in Sao Paulo. I see Sandro from northeast of Brazil, logged here. I don't know if he, he has a camera. Sandro, hi, Miguelito. Say, yeah. Say hi from the northeast of Brazil. Yeah. Hi from Natal. I'm sorry. This computer that I'm I'm using here uh, mm -hmm. does not have a camera. So. Hello. Uh, sorry about that. Hi, Reni. Th thanks a lot for the the availability and your time. It's looking forward to your talk. Thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. so, so this program is uh, for all bioinformaticians in Brazil, from mm -hmm. all universities. Yeah, yeah everybody's invited. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Miguel, yeah. Miguel and Sandro are organizing it. They can explain uh -huh. better. Si, no, Miguel, si. Miguel, I'm, 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 <laughs> Miguel. No, Miguel. Elder is helping too. Many people are helping. Yeah, many people are. Irene, by coincidence, my background is fake. This, this is Brian Hess from Trinity. We, we did our first uh, international seminar by Skype. He was in a TV by Skype and uh, controlling the presentation uh, from there, from Boston, uh, here. But the audience was, was standing here. 
so when we started to organize a seminar uh, for our program, we, we said, oh, let's do all together. So you are speaking to Sandro's program, to uh, Elder's program, to our program, many programs. I don't even know who else is, is, uh, is coming today, but many people from many programs on bioinformatics mostly, but also on genetics and genomics, etc. from all over Brazil. So we share well, this organization. There, there, there are people from Rio, UN, UN uh, State University of North yeah. Fluminense. <laughs> <laughs> not Fluminense. There, there is no translation for English <laughs> in English. Oh, yeah, I see on the chat. Uh, hello, Enrique. Enrique, say hi. <laughs> hello, I think you're muted. Yeah. yeah, you're muted. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for organizing this meeting. I'm, I'm very interested to hear about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Nice so to meet you. Irene, have, have you been here in Brazil? I, I, I don't know if I know that. No, I haven't. I think you tried to invite me, but I couldn't at That's the time. That's true. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. We have a, we have a program. We have a program, a program that can bring you to one of our places. Uh, here in Minas Gerais, uh, where I and Gloria are, we, we have, a, what's the name? We, we, we have a, 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 an assignment with EBI, so we can use our support from our CAPES Foundation to bring you. It's the and Cabana, then, right? The Cabana? No, no, no. the Cabana is, it's a is, is one. It's, a, it's a, a, a general Brazilian foundation that okay. is without money at, at this moment but uh, but when uh, we have this program we already can invite you because we have this agreement with ebi already signed it but for instance if you want to see the the beautiful city of natal uh, sandro can invite you to go from here to there then you fly back to here and then from here back to ebi you know so you can, you can yeah, visit yeah. many places in a single trip. That would be nice. And mm -hmm. we also do a lot of training as well. So I think there was um, uh, some EBI-led uh, training that went around, not just Brazil, mm -hmm. but South America as well, uh, in, mm -hmm. in general. We know, we know Cass Banksburg. Mm -hmm. I Cass... Know. No, she, she's a leader in Cabana from, from yeah. EMBL. Uh, we, we, Actually, we, are in, she, uh, we are in touch with Henning also. Henning was supposed to come to Brazil last year, right? Yeah, but uh, he, Held, Elder is, is organizing Cabana, and Chico Lobo is organizing a Cabana meeting in our, play, in our university. Yes, I know. I, I think guess, Cass, uh, Cass is coming. Yeah. Cat. Yes, mm -hmm. Cat uh, is mm -hmm. Bank, Banksbrook, something like sure. that. Cat. And you know, it, it, this, this Zoom that we have is for up to 500 people. If you would like to teach us a discipline for Brazilian mm -hmm. students, we could get all those PhD programs together for a discipline. If you would like to set up a discipline for us, for instance. So what would you know, that be? One uh, week. Just say. <laughs> We can get organized and have students from all over. We don't have to, 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 to give certificates from Cabana. We can give certificates for each program. Each okay. program gives the certification. A discipline is just you to choose the dates and uh, we can advertise around here. Mostly the PhD programs would be on bioinformatics, so they would, they would have a background. Right? Mm -hmm. So think about Okay, get in touch. Sure. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hi. Let me open my. <laughs> uh, Irene, I have a, a question, a curiosity, actually. Which cities of England there there are units of EBI? Uh, in England, there's only in in Cambridge, so there. Um, um, so we are part of EMBL, the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, 
and uh, it has five, I think, outstations. There's only one in England. Uh, there are two in Germany, one in Spain, one in France, and uh, uh, yeah, I think that's it. And one in Italy. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Which are the main research lines in EBI? Oh, in uh, EBI. Yeah. So it's just uh, so it's bioinformatics, but we cover a lot of different aspects yeah. of uh, bioinformatics. So we cover, uh, you know, gene expression, single cell, seq and so on, uh, proteins, uh, protein structures, proteomics. Uh, um, there's a cancer genomics program. Um, there's also uh, microbiomes. Uh, so there's a group studying microbiomes and uh, of vi uh, viruses and infection. So it's really, um, it's uh, it's quite broad. Oh, very nice, yeah. very nice. <laughs> Great. Yeah, uh, it's Cass Brooks Bank, not Banks Brook, <laughs> Brooks Bank. And okay. then the, the, I, I, I just oh, sent Kath. you yeah, the... I, I, uh, yes, gotcha. I, I know her, yeah. Ah, do you? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, Miguel, whenever we want to start, we can start. Yeah, let's uh, uh, just look at the clock here for the last minute. It's like popcorn, you see? The, the people are uh, arriving already. They are used to that we, we start to five past the, the hour. So well, let's say that is a pleasure to have Irene here and the coordination for today, the chairing would be by Gloria Franco that you take care of our nice seminar. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure to have all of you guys here together. It's great. And uh, Gloria, it's with you. Yeah, sure. Can I, can I share my screen? Sure, can I? Sure. Okay, great. Uh, and then I'd like to introduce Irene. Sorry for the pronunciation, Papa Teodoro. Yep. I don't know right. if it's like that. Sorry. <laughs> Is that, are you Greek? Are you from Greece? Yes, I, I am Greek. Oh, great. I, I imagine because of the name. <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure, a great pleasure to have her here with us. She's a team leader at EMBL, EBI, and uh, she works with gene expression and leads the group of the team of gene expression at EMBL. Uh, and her group focuses on gene expression analysis at tissues and single cell level across the species. Her team delivers tools and service for the submission of achieving analysis and visualization of functional genomics experiments. Uh, she is geneticist at University College London and uh, master and PhD at Imper Imperial College. And uh, here is her group and the kind of uh, research she does that is very important for us because we want to know much more about single cell transcriptomics and genomics as well. Thank you, Irene, for accepting our invitation. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much for inviting me. So I'll, I will share my screen uh, now. Um, so do you see the right view? Can you please confirm? Sure, it's, it's okay, great. Okay, great. Uh, so yeah, so thank you uh, for the opportunity to talk about the work in my team. So I'm the team leader at the EBI and my team delivers expression atlas and single cell expression atlas. And recently I started a small research group in parallel which complements the activities of the service team. Um, so, uh, so yeah, today, so I'm going to start talking about the services that we, that my team provides, the Expression Atlas and uh, single, for bulk and single cell RNA-seq. And uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about some projects that we do that use uh, single cell um, um, transcriptomics and other data sets and they integrate them and some future, introduce some future projects. 
So, um, yeah, so basically um, the, um, my team's mission is really to extract bi biological meaning from gene and protein expression data and make it easily available to the research community. And um, how we do that, so for this purpose, we develop the expression atlas. And this is an open science resource that enables querying and visualizing uh, gene and protein expression across different species, tissues, and conditions. So, so how we do that? So we collect uh, uh, data sets that have been produced by the research community and they're publicly available in uh, archives and so on. And we perform um, very deep uh, data curation uh, on their metadata, making sure they are correct. Um, they can, the metadata can be annotated with uh, ontology um, annotations, so that uh, ontology terms, so that they can be easily findable and searchable. And then uh, once we can gather this uh, information uh, that will enable the reanalysis, then we look at the actual data and see if they're um, of good quality, the raw data. And we performed a standardized um, data analysis. So we use similar pipeline for the same pipeline for the same type of data um, and produce these uh, high quality analysis results that then we store and we serve through a user interface that enables uh, data search and data visualization. Uh, so we cover all uh, types, all kinds of species, tissues and conditions. Um, and uh, uh, we also aim to dis enable discovery and interpretation of uh, gene expression analysis results quickly and easily by um, biologists or bioinformaticians or any kind of user, really. Um, so this is what the uh, expression atlas looks like on the front page. At the moment, um, it contains uh, data from 65 species, and we have collected uh, more than 4,000 bulk uh, expression data sets um, from bulk rna and expression and protein expression. And of those, 227 are um, correspond to baseline expression, which is the um, expression under normal conditions uh, across tissues of uh, species, for example. And also we have uh, almost 4,000, uh, most of the data sets uh, come from differential expression. So it's a contrast between, for example, healthy tissue and a disease tissue. So a user can query for a gene here or a biological condition such as um, um, a disease or a, a tissue and so on. And uh, then here, for example, I have queried for the gene REG1B. And then uh, on the results page, they can see, they can visualize the expression of that gene across the different tissues and the different experiments in a type of uh, heat map uh, for baseline um, across the different species. So here is an example from human uh, where we see that this gene, uh, wherever in, in the experiments where it's been, um, that tissue has been tested, it, it's high, highly expressed consistently in, uh, pan in pancreas, uh, both from um, the uh, transcriptomic experiments and the proteomic as well. Um, and then uh, on a different tab, we uh, show the results from the differential expression, from the contrasts, um, where we, uh, as we view the data sets down the list, um, we can see a pattern emerging that, emerging that this gene is uh, uh, down-regulated in quite a few of uh, pancreatic uh, cancer data sets. Um, so at some point in the last uh, few years, we, uh, with the explosion of single cell uh, data sets, uh, we developed a similar resource for single cell RNA-seq. So first, uh, let me take a, sp a step back to uh, highlight the, um, why is it important to look at gene expression in single cells. So the cell is the basic unit of life. 
and uh, the cell types uh, differ substantially across uh, each, uh, each tissue um, and have different kinds of uh, gene expression uh, trends and signatures. Um, so with uh, uh, bulk RNA-seq, if we look at the lower um, uh, part of this uh, diagram, we uh, can we basically can uh, extract the tissue and extract uh, the RNA from the whole mix of cells that is that tissue. And what we get is this uh, kind of average uh, gene expression from all the cells. Uh, and we cannot really uh, have a view on the cellular heterogeneity because it's a must. Um, with single cell analysis, we, we dissociate the cells from the tissue. And uh, then we measure uh, the um, uh, RNA um, uh, from each one of the different cells. Uh, so basically, we get a distinct expression profile per cell. And therefore, these kinds of experiments can reveal the heterogeneity and the subpopulation expression variability of uh, thousands of cells at the time. Um, so um, uh, with uh, single cell uh, gene expression, um, the, we can open the door to several different biological and clinical questions, such as understanding heterogeneous uh, samples. Uh, we can analyze cellular heterogeneity, for example, during immune or stem cell development. Uh, we can identify and analyze rare cell types, such as, uh, for example, circulating uh, tumor cells from liquid biopsies, and also understand cellular transitions and switches in different cell states. And they can be used for comprehensive genetic diagnosis, for example, in pre-implantation of genetic diagnosis. And it's being used, um, a single cell rna -seq has already revolutionized many fields in biology, increasing the resolution of our understanding in areas such as neurobiology or embryology, and to mention just a few. So uh, now I'm going to go into how we develop this uh, integrated resource of uniformly analyzed single cell RNA-seq data. And we follow exactly the same um, uh, workflow as we did for bulk datasets. We source the relevant uh, raw data and metadata. Uh, we annotate them with ontology identifiers so that we can combine them and search uh, for them. And uh, we perform um, standardized data analysis and provide the results from the user interface. And uh, also what's important in, um, with uh, our work in the single cell expression atlas, we also power up and disseminate atlas uh, pro projects. So you might have heard the human cell atlas and there's recently the fly cell atlas that uh, was set up. Uh, uh, we also have the mouse, uh, the um, tabula muris uh, there as well. Um, and we, um, we are a point of disseminating these various baseline uh, expression in the different cell types of species. Uh, so yeah, so, um, so we developed a single cell expression atlas. Uh, with, I think it has been around since uh, 2000, late 2018. Uh, this is again the front page. It looks very much like the bulk expression atlas. You can query for a gene only at the moment, uh, although in a future release, uh, there's going to be functionality to query for a cell type or a disease or another feature. Um, uh, you can read more about it in our latest um, uh, update paper on uh, nucleic acids uh, and AR um, database update uh, paper. And uh, currently in single cell expression atlas, we have data from 18 different species. With our latest release, we had a push for uh, plants. So we uh, started um, analyzing the emerging plant data sets. Um, and um, that corresponds to around 217 single cell data sets across all the species and more than 5 million cells. 
Uh, still, uh, most of our data sets come from human and, and mouse, um, uh, and only a minority of data really come from all the other 16 species. That really reflects on uh, the, um, the data that the community is generating at the moment. So uh, one of the first things that we had to do is uh, really to understand the single cell, the different single cell RNA-seq uh, assays and understand what kinds of metadata we need to record and obtain from, um, from uh, the data generators, uh, the biologists, in order to reproduce the analysis and make really these data sets uh, reproducible. So we studied that and we collected uh, the different types of metadata that describe the uh, sample, single cell isolation techniques, uh, the, the cell well quality, library construction, and also some bits of the post analysis uh, of single cell quality, as well as what uh, cell type each uh, cell corresponds to. And we produce these guidelines for reporting a single cell RNA-seq experiments that if any of you ever wants to generate experiments, it might be a good idea to read about them when you want to submit them to um, an archive, for example, before publication. Um, so, so these are the, the what we call the minimum information about an experiment that we require for it to um, go into the uh, archive and then be reanalyzed uh, automatically by single cell expression atlas. So um, how do we represent experiments in, uh, um, in single cell expression atlas? Uh, so as I said, you can search for a gene and, and so on. Uh, and you receive a, you, you get back a list uh, where that gene is expressed in which experiments it is a, a marker gene, for example, in a cluster and so on. And then you can click on them and you land on a, each one of an experiment. This is the kind of landing page that you view when you uh, enter. And it's um, uh, basically a single cell RNA-seq studies uh, represented by a TSNE plot. Uh, where you see uh, each dot is a, is a cell that is um, um, uh, on the, uh, and, and we show this, the same TSME plot twice. So on the left hand side, we color by the, the cells by the metadata. And uh, here we uh, selected the uh, inferred, uh, the, the cell type of each cell. And on the right hand side, uh, we color, you can color the cells by the gene expression of a particular gene of interest. So here I use the Reg1A, uh, which um, we know from the bulk uh, studies that is expressed in pancreas. This experiment is a pancreatic experiment, human pancreas. And we see that this gene has a high, highly uh, sh shows high expression in this um, um, in, the, in this area of the of the this niplot, um, which uh, actually corresponds to a particular cell type, as we see on the left hand side, which is the pancreatic ACNR cells. So we see that this is expressed in pancreas, but specifically in the ACNR cells. Um, and then we have a different views here on the left hand side. You can click and view the marker genes per cell type that are inferred by our pipelines. Uh, you can click to view this uh, uh, other view that is the anatomogram. So for, speci for specific um, tissues, especially in human, we're doing this with the human cell atlas. We have uh, enabled, uh, we have developed these uh, drawings of um, um, the anatomical uh, tissues uh, of the human body with uh, different levels of uh, zooming in. So that's an, an example of the pancreas. And on the right hand side, you can see um, a heat map of the different cell types in the uh, pancreas with their top uh, five. Um, uh, marker genes uh, so that the user can easily uh, view the cell types and the marker gene. You could click on an area in this particular case and view, um, and then you, you see a, um, a view down to the cell type level. 
Uh, so here I highlighted the uh, SNR cells to see where they are and click on them and then you get the list uh, for the ACNR cells, uh, the list of genes for the ACNR cells. So um, at the moment, we, this work is in progress. So we have, um, um, we have some anagrams for a few tissues and we're working on them as, uh, we, uh, as we receive data sets from the human cell atlas. Uh, if there is a tissue we already have, but an area that we want a, a higher level uh, zoom in, uh, we produce that. Or if it's a new organ, then we uh, develop an atomogram for, for that organ. Um, and these uh, get released and extended with uh, each subsequent release, uh, software release of uh, the single cell expression atlas. Um, so, so yeah, so now I want to uh, kind of switch uh, a little bit um, uh, the talk from showing the interface uh, to uh, explain a little bit how we analyze the data because for, in order to produce these meaningful and integrated views of data, uh, we really need to perform a uniform and standardized analysis across the data sets. Um, so, so what do we do? So in single cell expression atlas, we really uh, focus on two types of single cell data sets. And these are either coming from plate-based studies, so smart uh, protocols where you mechanically uh, separate the, the, the cells, um, um, or um, from droplet-based uh, studies, uh, such as uh, 10x and uh, or drop seek um, and then we have uh, for the uh, first level of the the, the processing uh, we uh, we have two different pipelines one for the smart like protocols and one for the tenix and drop seek so all of them do the similar kind of tasks so we uh, read and filter and trim and we filter and trim the reads and we pair them, we do the quantification, and uh, we remove empty uh, droplets for the droplet-based studies. And then we aggregate the libraries and uh, samples. And for the smart protocols for this, we use uh, Fast FastX toolkits and FastQ utils, uh, FastQ pair and Callisto to do the uh, quantifications. For Droplet, we use Alevin, which is uh, out of the box. So it does a lot of, uh, of the uh, primary steps and then Droplet utils. And what we get out of those um, two different pipelines is um, a table of row counts with all cells, so a sparse matrix. And then uh, we uh, do the, um, the, what we call the tertiary analysis, uh, which is the uh, cell involves cell filtering and normalization, dimensionality reduction, uh, clustering. We detect markers and we do a batch correction as well. And uh, regardless of what type of data set it is and which uh, pipeline it comes from, we use a ScanPy uh, that includes uh, all these functions and har with Harmony, we perform the batch correction. Um, and uh, so these are our tools. So, oh yes, um, we do have these tools available with uh, Nextflow pipelines if anyone wants to use them, um, but also we have included them in Galaxy. And uh, we also, we, we worked with um, uh, the Galaxy team in, uh, at the University of Freiburg uh, to be able to develop this um, uh, instance that is uh, kindly hosted by uh, Freiburg, where we have uh, made available uh, the workflow we use uh, for single cell expression atlas uh, analysis. So you can easily find all the tools there um, in a pipeline in Galaxy, and you, you, you would be able to uh, access uh, data sets of single cell expression atlas through Galaxy uh, or import your own data set, run the analysis that we run for atlas on your data set or run a different analysis on an atlas data set using other tools that are available in uh, Galaxy. 
Um, and also here we have a particular uh, workflow that we develop with colleagues in the Human Cell Atlas that you can also visualize in Galaxy using um, using the cell browser, which presents a UMAP or a TSNE plot that uh, uh, some, that the user has generated via Galaxy. And um, we recently published uh, this uh, work, so feel free to go and have a look. Um, and read more about it. And um, uh, we also, uh, you can also, if you want to use it, we have a little help desk as well. Um, so, so yeah, so uh, as I hinted before, uh, through the single cell expression atlas, we disseminate the results of large projects. We currently have tabula muris and uh, quite a few human cell atlas experiments. So as uh, the human cell atlas experiments become available, we are working with the HCA team to uh, process them and make them available through the single cell expression atlas. And we are currently uh, excuse me. We are currently working with the uh, Fly Cell. We are actually part of the Fly Cell Atlas uh, Consortium. So, um, uh, once uh, so, so once the data are available, they will be made. Um, uh, they will be disseminated through the Single Cell Expression Atlas. <clears throat> So um, now I would like to um, switch uh, a little bit more and uh, talk a little bit more about my uh, research, uh, at my, research, my research group and what we do uh, with all those data. So uh, basically, thanks to the work of the service team, we are collecting and performing standardized analysis to thousands of expression data sets, including large scale Atlas projects. Um, for uh, the expression atlas and the research team, um, my research team leverages this data to take it further and investigate the gene expression to phenotype connection in human disease and uh, also across uh, species. Miguel? Um, uh, it seems that she... What happened? Yes, yeah, something happened. The connection uh -huh. stopped. The, the connection uh, from her, the hers connection, right? Yeah. Everybody's here. Do you have her um, WhatsApp? Number? That, that... Uh, no, she'll be back, but mm -hmm. uh, I have an email. Might be mm -hmm. battery, maybe. Okay, guys, let's wait. I'm going to check my email to see if she sends a hi from there. No. no. Não é só eu que tenho esse problema, né? <risos> <risos> o, o Marcos, eu estava organizando a aula magna da pós-graduação do ICB, o palestrante era da África do Sul. Uhum. Caiu no meio e ele não viu, ele continuou e ele não atendia o WhatsApp, não respondia, e foi, foi desastroso, ficamos 10 minutos. E aí ele viu o nosso contato e voltou. Aí nós podemos terminar. Foi bem desastroso o negócio. É engraçado, porque, assim, deve ser alguma coisa interna da casa dela mesmo, né? Às vezes acaba a luz lá, o modem cai. Outro dia, no final da minha aula, deu um pico de luz aqui. Foi só um pico, mas o meu modem foi embora, né? Aí eu fiquei sem conexão. Agora ah. eu já aprendi, eu fico com o meu celular ligado junto aqui, né? Com os dois, aí de repente eu... Ah, eu eu tô com o celular agora, eu não confio na outra, a outra tá horrorosa. O seu celular tá bem melhor, é. Sim, eu... você deu aquela dica de ligar e desligar, tirar... O chip, é, né? Fazer... É, rerotear, <risos> né? 
A moça é, do Telefônica eu... me falou para fazer isso e eu duvidei. Aí eu fiz e funcionou. Fala, Guilherme. É, aqui também. Tá... É, é, minha, minha preocupação foi o que aconteceu na aula magna. O palestrante nem reparou que ele caiu. Uhum. Ele, é, é porque, às vezes, você está olhando a sua tela só, você não está vendo uhum. é, o zoom, entendeu? Você está só focado na sua tela. É... Aconteceu isso na aula magna. Será que ela não, não recebe um chat, não? O, não, o, é, o cai... Elder... O Helder, seus alunos, talvez tenha aluno lá, Helder, não, né? Não sei se ele, se ele não tem. Não sei como... se o Helder está aqui ainda, por isso eu ver aqui. Acho é. que o Helder saiu. Eu tenho um contato. É, o Helder com o Nelly. não está aqui, não. Posso chamar o Nelly aqui também, né? Deixa eu chamar o Nelly aqui para ver. Não, o Helder não está aqui, não. Ele, quer... ele saiu. Uhum. Gente, são coisas da. Da modernidade. Sim. Sim. <risos> da vida online. Sim. Envie e-mail para ela. Miguel, você quer enviar? Já mandei. Já mandou, né? Estou tentando, estou vendo aqui se ela responde o e-mail, né? E uhum. eu estou chamando Nelly aqui para ver se tem alguma tempestade lá no, lá, lá no EBI. Alguma coisa assim. Ele responde rápido, vamos ver. Não tem muito jeito, não, né? A gente só tem essas, essa chance é. aqui. Do email. Por isso que aí agora, depois eu aprendi, eu pego o WhatsApp de todos os palestrantes. Uhum, Para caso é aconteça alguma coisa assim. É. Uma possibilidade. Nos próximos você pega, então, fala assim, olha, às vezes é, acontece é, assim, a conexão. Eu não cair. tinha tanto contato com ela, assim, mas você viu, né? Ele não me respondeu aqui, não. Pode ter acontecido alguma coisa lá. O Nelly não é muito demorado para falar um oi, né? O é, Nelly está lá, no IBI mesmo. Mas ela está em casa. É, não, eu digo, pode ser alguma coisa da cidade, né? Sei lá, ah, tá. tempestade, algum negócio assim. <risos> provedora. Sei lá. Hein? É, exatamente. Que é, até eu lembro. É, a, o Paulo Ricardo aqui falou na, na, no chat que se ela tiver palestrando normalmente, ela não vai verificar o WhatsApp. Foi, foi o que aconteceu com o palestrante que a gente convidou da África do Sul. <risos> A gente pode tentar Ele... achar o chat, chat, falar com ela no chat, né? Assim, às vezes dá um pouco. Mas qual né? chat? Aqui mesmo, não sei, mas acho que ela não vai ter internet, né? Então, eu não, nunca experimentei essa situação de estar no Zoom e eu continuar ah, tá. e não perceber. Entendi. Uhum. É, mas eu acho que se cair, a con... coisa, né? se cair a conexão, ela também não vê o chat. É... Então. Camila falou aqui para a Irene, é. que a gente está esperando ela. É, eu acho que... É, não custa tentar, né, Camila? É isso daí. E olha que tudo que eu sabia mostrar do negócio dela era o site que ela já mostrou, né? O site, <risos> o site você tem umas maneiras de... Oh, aqui, ó, a, 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 o Hugo conseguiu o telefone dela no site do, do IBI. Está lá no Liga. chat. Liga você aí, Glória. Vai, deixa eu? eu? É. Tá. <risos> deixa eu tentar aqui, então. É porque esse telefone deve ser do escritório também, né? não, é, não é da casa dele. Ah, é capaz. Eu tenho alguns e-mails de lá, tipo o Henning, por exemplo. Né? Opa, a Irene está aqui. Ó. Deixa eu ver oh. o que ela falou aqui. Um, sinto que eu tenho power cut. É um power cut na área uhum. dela, né? I'm é. sorry to have a power cut in my area. Eu try and connect on my phone. Ela está tentando vir pelo fone. Exatamente. Ela vai aparecer pelo fone. É power cut mesmo, tá vendo? O Nelly já teria dado ah. um oi também. Ô, gente, Acontece até na Inglaterra. 
Ela tá Power meio que né? Se fosse Brasil, já tá todo mundo torcendo o nariz, né? Mas olha aí. Não, acontece. Vamos ficar de olho aqui no chat que ela deve aparecer já já. Porque pelo celular ela percebeu, uhum. né? Muito bem. Olha, estão dizendo que o verão está muito pesado na Europa, né? Pode é. ser que está todo mundo usando ar condicionado <risos> e pode estar tá acabando a luz mesmo. Vamos ver pelo fone. Ela deve ter o link, né? Deixa eu repetir o link para ela aqui. Opa, o Nelly está no Brasil. Ah. Ele veio para cá, não conseguiu voltar. Beleza. Eu até tenho... Bom, agora que ela já está já tentando, né? o problema é se ela tem pacote de dados para poder fazer pelo fone. Né? E o seminário? Ah, ela, como é que ela vai mostrar o é, PowerPoint? Tem e-mail, assim. É. Talvez o que ela pode estar tá tentando conseguir fazer é os, conectar o celular no ah, computador, sim, no, no para computador. poder usar tá, a entendi. internet. Do, uhum. é, tá. Como essa coisa de, de pobre, né? não deve estar tá acostumada a fazer isso. Né? Até ligar o Bluetooth, parear, não sei o quê, é, ou achar o cabo, se for um Mac, tá, não sei o quê, demora um pouco para conseguir, porque... Eu já vivi assim há muito tempo. É. Eu, eu viajava com um notebook pequenininho e o celular ficava no meu bolso para usar a internet lá em Porto de Galinhas. Eu estava lá trabalhando e o celular no bolso é, é, emitindo o sinal. Mas demora uns minutinhos para você fazer esse setup se você não está acostumado. Hoje, por exemplo, se eu for fazer aqui nesse computador aqui, eu acho que eu demoro um tiquinho. Agora, pena que ela, não, ela agora ela ia mostrar as coisas mais biológicas, né? mas eu tenho muita dúvida de como é que é aquele tipo de clusterização. Não sei se o Marcos C viu lá. Cisne, G... né? É. Cisne? Isso. Uhum. Tem aquele tipo de clusterização que você, conforme você escolhe, as células vão mais para lá, mais para cá, beleza. E eu estou escolhendo a tela ficar bonitinho, né? Beleza. E aí depois eu boto lá os casos, assim, vejo a expressão das células aqui e ali e tal, beleza. Mas é legal fazer umas contas, né? Um valor para saber. Aquele gênio ah, que ela mostrou, por exemplo, em qual cluster ficaria melhor, né? Uhum. Então, vamos lá. Se for um reparo de luz, assim, ela devia ter tido um, um aviso, assim, acho que não, né? São 18h40 lá. Às vezes é tempestade que faz cair essas coisas, né? Aqui na Pampulha cai uns raios e eu fico sem internet. Não, mas lá é, deve ontem... ser verão, né? É. é ontem o, o, o site da FMG, o, a rede da FMG estava caótica, né? O, o Mudo foi, caiu. Sabe o que foi? O, o no-break hum. da, da reitoria, né? Que alimenta hum. todas as máquinas deles, teve problema. Então, é. caiu a força mesmo, as máquinas até estavam lá, mas caiu a força, então a gente ficou sem DNS, sem comunicação, o site parou, uhum. e foi um problema elétrico na vitória toda. Então, é, mas de tarde tá lá, voltaram, de tarde quando, é, Eu estava é, no meu último tava segundo adorado. de aula. Eu, uhum. é, Tinha trabalho para entregar, agora eu tem tô... até domingo, tão feliz da vida. <risos> Eu estava tava me despedindo na minha aula quando caiu. E, e, e assim, eu entrei no telefone só para falar tchau, né? Eu vou deixar meu telefone aqui já conectado sempre para uma emergência dessas, assim. Né? E nós estamos gravando, né, Tiago? Você está por aí, está no YouTube, né? 
O YouTube está gravando nós falando aqui, esperando. Tá. Oi, e... Oi, gente. Isso, né, isso, tá bem? Estamos, estamos todos falando aí para o YouTube. Bom, o que, que aconteceu? É, ela explicou como o site funciona e tal. É, seria interessante todo mundo dar uma visitada, porque tem coisas de Covid, tem de tudo, né? Eu posso dar uma brincadinha, ó. E aí ela ia entrar na parte da ciência que ela faz, né? Ela deve gostar muito de pâncreas. E qualquer Não, eu coisa, acho que ela usou... Der... Não sei se ela gosta de... Ela usou como exemplo, porque... É o último é, parece que os experimentos dela são... tinha um pâncreas lá, mas não sei. Agora, é, ela ia entrar nessa parte biológica, a gente pode remarcar, né? para nós não é problema, a gente acha uma data aí e a gente remarca, né? para ela falar, ser a segunda parte, porque ela chegou a fazer uns 30 minutos, ela deve ter mais meio seminário pela frente para contar das partes biológicas, né? A gente vê até onde a gente aguenta aqui. Qualquer coisa. É, gente... o problema é que vamos, vamos perdendo audiência, né? Então, de repente. É um pouquinho é... a gente perde mesmo, né? Mas é... assim, se a gente for recomeçar, tem. Eu acho que a última vez que eu olhei, olhei é, tinha 114 pessoas, muita gente. É, 114, é, tem 104, né? Então. Uhum. Uma pessoa foi. <risos> Caiu. Mas é, a gente pode dar um tempo, Miguel, e se ela não voltar, a gente cancela e. e é, eu aviso ela. ela. Eu estou esperando para ver se ela. Se ela. Se ela. Consegue entrar, né? Se ela me fala alguma coisa no e-mail. Eu vou perguntar aqui. Como é que fala? Remarcar? Remarque, não, né? É... Reschedule. 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 Reschedule, é. Nossa, não deu branco também. Reschedule. Reschedule. É, deu branco. Eu acho que podemos esperar um pouquinho, porque ela deve estar sofrendo para se reconectar. É. Então, se ela conseguir, ela vai encontrar a sala esvaziada. Podemos esperar um Sim. pouquinho. É a minha sugestão. Sim, uhum. Henrique, claro. Boa tarde. Ei, Marcelo! Ei, Nossa, quanto <risos> tempo não te vejo, Marcelo! Pois Bom é. te ver! Eu tenho assistido de vez em quando aqui. Você Olha, que ótimo! Como é que estão as coisas em Brasília? Muito sofrimento é. por aí? Não, é. Em casa, né? Trabalhando em casa. É. Mas... Já foi vacinado? Já, primeira dose e já consegui. É, tô... Graças a Deus. É, é, Nós aqui bom. também. Mas em Belo Horizonte está bem atrasado em termos de idade. É, os, aqui, os professores foram, mas... É, aqui os professores... Graças a Deus, não, não é assim foram. É, aqui em Brasília, o professor não é muito importante, não. O professor é o <risos> rapideiro, essas não. coisas são é importantes. Brileiro, é aí isso é importante. Ai, Deus. Mas aqui a gente está atrasado na idade. Acho que, acho que Belo Horizonte é a capital mais atrasada no, na vacinação por idade. Uma coisa horrorosa. É horroroso. Nossa, mãe. Hum. E a minha filha, por exemplo, de 18 anos, segundo consta o cronograma, só em outubro. Isso se não tiver atraso na entrega das doses. Ah, é, mas, é, mas, é, é, mas é isso que eu estou imaginando também aqui. Bem, o, o governador prometeu até outubro fechar os 18 anos também, né? mas está meio é. atrasado, está... Fe porque abre pra, por idade, mas aí não, não abre. Assim, a inscrição está tá fechada, está assim, em suspensa. Aí ninguém... É, porque não tem dose, né? É, não tem vacina. É, mas, uma, mas um, pouco tempo, há 15 dias, estava no jornal, estava cheio de dose em estoque e ele não estava vacinando. Porque eu acho que eles ficam esperando. Por exemplo, vou fechar aqui 59 anos. Uhum. Não fecha, porque é. as pessoas não vão, eles ficam esperando simplesmente, eternamente. É, ou o, o pessoal da comorbidade, né? O pessoal da comorbidade é, como... também, é. muitos não estão indo. E aí ficam lá as doses esperando e é. as pessoas não vão, né? E aí não vão, não vai caminhando, tá difícil. É, eu Nossa. consegui pela comorbidade, eu, né? Assim, é. 
Eu fui um pouco antes da vida, ou depois abriu para mim, né? Mas uh -huh. com impressão alta eu consegui. Ah, já... tá. Uh -huh. Já estava nos 70 lá, eu fui. <risos> muito bom, muito bom te ver. Bom ver vocês aí também. Sim. 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 E os Me colegas daí da UNB. Grande Tudo Marcelo. Bem? Marcelo, se você quiser fazer parte como organizador de um mês aí, convidar alguém legal tá, posso... aí, o ano que vem nós vamos fazer a agenda de novo. Assim que chegar em agosto, por aí, a gente já deve lançar a agenda para o ano que vem aí. Né? Beleza? Se quiser, pode ser um tier aí no mês aí, convidar uns carinhos, um cara, alguma pessoa legal. Ah. Posso, pode ser. O, é. o, lembrando aí, fazer uma propaganda, então, vai ter BSB é, em segundo semestre. Né? Não sei se Manda para a gente aí, para a gente mandar, divulgar. Mandar, vou mandar, a gente é. divulga no programa de pós-graduação. É, tá é o Tiago o Thiago aí, ó, tá, o Tiago é nosso secretário sensacional, fantástico. Legal. Ele divulga aí. Vocês têm, Legal, infra já, vocês têm infra já comprada, Marcelo? Porque... A gente não usa esse, esse Zoom o tempo todo, sabe? E ele cabe uhum. 500 pessoas. Dá para fazer uhum. sala e tudo mais. Se você precisar e quiser economizar a graninha... Olha, eu, faz, não, é bom saber. Vou saber eu vou... viu? Ótimo, tá bom. Só eu... dá uma olhada lá no nosso catálogo, lá para ver se na, no, no Brasil Webinar, se não está numa data que a gente já está usando lá. Qual que é a data? Você já tem né, a data de... Tem é a data, eu tenho que achar aqui. Mas eu vou te mandar. Eu vou, eu acho que eu não vou achar Mas fica, fica ligado que está disponível, tá bom? Não precisa gastar aí uma... Obrigado. Uma não, grande, ótimo, tá ótimo. Bom? Qualquer é porque... outro evento, se você quiser que seja grandão. Tá. Não, legal saber. Legal. Vocês estão assinando institucionalmente, é isso? É, a gente conseguiu um esquema para um ano, né? Meio punk conseguir mas a gente tem até janeiro ou fevereiro, assim, porque não, não tinha como, né? Cê, pagar mensalmente é mais caro, né? Uhum. E, e a gente sempre passa de 100 pessoas aqui, e, e às vezes ter as pessoas aqui é mais legal, porque a, a galera pode entrar sem avisar e não ficar postando no YouTube, né? Mas abrir a câmera, perguntar, assim. E fica gravado, né? No YouTube, isso é muito também legal. Também fica, também fica. Mas, uhum. assim, a galera tem perguntado uns 30 minutos de pergunta depois, é. né? A galera pergunta o que é, né? E o uhum. speaker uhum. ficando aí, né? Funciona legal. Ah, é, Miguel, eu a gente... tem aí. Muita é. gente, né? Sempre tem bastante gente, eu vejo. Sempre tem bastante gente, Sim, é. sim. A gente já chegou a uns 150, por é. aí, né? A Janet Kelso, por exemplo, tem muita gente, né? É, então, sempre passa de 100, assim, uhum. então é, é bom que use, assim, né? É legal. Uhum. E a gente tem que aprender é. também a fazer um monte de salas, né? Porque, por exemplo, se você for fazer posters, você consegue fazer aqui 20 salas, né? Uma, uma com, com cada tema, né? E aí a galera vai para a sala e lá tem um coordenador, sei lá, de estrutural, e aí discute os, os, os trabalhos de estrutural lá, depois volta todo mundo, sacou? Aí dá para fazer um meet, eu estava aprendendo a fazer, eu não sei, tanto que a gente conta muito com o Tiago, né, Glória? Nossa secretária. É, o Tiago, o Tiago é que sabe tudo. O Tiago tudo. pilota tudo, faz tudo aqui, dá <risos> todo o suporte para É, nós, as né? nossas defesas têm sido pelo Zoom. Tem, né? É... Então, eu e avisei a Irene aqui por e-mail que a gente pode remarcar a segunda parte dela, se ela acha que está ok. Então, deve estar tão problemático lá que nem isso é. ela não respondeu ainda não. Né? Então, acho eu que acho que o negócio ir. deve ter realmente escapado do controle, que... né? Coisas é, que nós não conseguimos... Não né? né? Não temos o que fazer, né, gente? Não tem o que fazer. É. E assim, quando é. a gente vê, a gente acha que é, o problema é o nosso computador, né? Nunca vai é. mesmo. Não é que a pessoa não é. tem problema. Ô, ô, Marcelo, então eu já vou te dar uma dica... É. Eu estou fazendo parte da diretoria da SBG de genética, uhum. né? E uhum. a gente está organizando o congresso para 13 e 17 de setembro. Vocês são bem-vindos, claro, todos. Uhum. E a gente vai pedir para os palestrantes enviarem o um vídeo da apresentação uhum. com antecedência, tendo em vista que isso tem acontecido muito. As palestras, essa, né, as conexões caem durante as palestras. Então, o, tendo o vídeo, se o palestrante não estiver disponível por algum problema técnico, né, na hora das uhum. perguntas, pelo menos a palestra vai ser apresentada. Então, assim, não 